Hi class, this is Jim and I am going to do a demonstration today on how to paint fur in an animal's eye. This is my first uh, painting demo uh, via video, so uh, bear with me here, but I would say this looks very professional. You can even see some of my materials laid out here, uh, which I'd like to go through. Um, let's start with the least interesting paper towels uh, for cleaning brushes. We have some brushes. We have a, a nice array. So we have um, small to medium to large and of course the magic fan brush. Okay, we have our Terpenoid Natural, which is here. It has my name on it so I don't get confused. There it is in the third dimension. And we have our paints. So I'm using oil today. If you're using acrylic, pastel, pencil, charcoal, whatever, um, the concepts will remain the same. So uh, my preference is oil, so I'll be using oil today. Um, I have the solvent-free gel, which is kind of magical because it's non-toxic, and you can see that laid out right here. And you have a reference. Um, don't have a printer at home right now, so I'm just uh, using um, the iPad um, just to get something in front of me. You can use your phone. Um, if you have a photo, you can work from a book. Um, I mentioned uh, maybe uh, a photo of a pet uh, is a perfect way to practice fur and eyes. Okay, and um, I want to address this color. It's a very uh, almost fluorescent orange color. Um, it's actually cadmium red, which uh, in this case looks a bit orange, uh, as sometimes the reds do. And uh, what I did was I primed this uh, panel in advance. So it's acrylic and it's a really, really bright color. Uh, a lot of times people ask why. Well, for one, um, this reference here, there's lots of grays, um, kind of tans, grays, cool blues, kind of neutral colors with this back background um, underneath it. When that shows through, that should absolutely pop. Um, and that's the idea. That's an old trick um, I've learned from uh, you know, those artist magazines where you see um, sketches in progress. Um, you can see a lot of times pastel artists will work on really bright paper um, and then they can do their kind of subtle colors on top and it will pop. I actually have a reference here. Of course, it's the heaviest book. Hopefully I don't drop it on top of all my materials. But take a look, that's Degas. Um, I've never met anyone who didn't like Degas, so here he is. Um, I think he's one of the more... Um, fan favorites of the artist, but look at that. I'm really, really fascinated with his uh, kind of incomplete works here, this sketch. Um, he used pastel, but just look at that green underneath. And then when he uses kind of those kind of gray flesh tones, there's a little bit of warmth in there. Wow, what a contrast against the green. And sometimes he'll let it show through too. So you have this kind of buzz between contrasting colors, which I think is really, really interesting. Okay, I didn't drop the book, so yay me. Without further ado, I would like to get painting here. You might see there is a light sketch. Um, I can go into how to draw an animal's eye, um, but that's uh, another demo. So I want to get you guys painting. I say that a lot. You know, uh, you can't remove drawing from painting, but I can make it simpler just so we can start painting. So I think that's the idea here. I don't want you to be too fussy with the sketch. So I did just take a, a quick pencil sketch and just sketched out a very faint, you can kind of see it, just the shape. And that's why I cropped this image here too, is because basically um, I removed the anatomy out of the equation. You know, drawing animals is difficult. Um, drawing something in proportion is difficult. So for example, if I were to do an animal's face, I'd be really teaching you guys how to draw. Um, and that's not what this is about. It's more about texture and how to paint fur. So in this case, I only have one eye, so you don't have to measure it up against another eye. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, I might be teaching you guys how to paint a cross-eyed leopard, um, which uh, is probably not what you want to do. So the one eye removes kind of the drawing out of the equation, which I think will be good. It will just get us uh, to be able to make something today. Okay, I'm gonna open up my Terpenoid Natural here. Hopefully you can see everything. I thought this looked pretty good. There's uh, a couple annoying shadows, but just bear with me here. All right, so um, I will start um, with basically the darkest values first. So 
I'm going to get my burnt umber and my ultra blue, ultramarine blue here. Um, and that makes a pretty true black. It needs a little bit of gel. I, let, I put my paints out yesterday because, um, of course, I was nervous and I've been setting this up all week. So, <laughs> so bear with me here. So you want the paint to feel a little loose. If it's tacky or sticky or kind of consistency of honey, add the solvent to it because that will loosen it up and increase the flow. All right, so where's the darkest values? You can see around the eye here, and then I have some spots. Spots are nice because it's like little markers uh, along um, the pitcher plane that will make it so that you kind of just fill in in between. It's a nice touch. Tigers are like that too. Tigers kind of turn... Uh, and animal anatomy into you kind of paint by number in a way because you're just filling in area by area. Okay, so uh, I just read in a book in class um, just about how it's important to use, you know, lighter, um, lighter uh, layers of paint early on and build up to thickness. You know, that's something I've said before too, but you know, tread lightly in the beginning because this is acting as your sketch. If we make a mess right off the bat, you know, and if we're impatient and we put globs of paint down, um, we're going to be working against ourselves right away. Ooh, there, we have something. Look at that. Now, if it takes you a long time to get to this point, to get a shape you like, that's fine. Take your time. But like I said, um... It's less about drawing here and more about just getting something down so that we can start practicing for. Okay, not bad. Now, it's so tempting to do the pupil, but then if I do the pupil, I will do the iris. If I do the iris, I will do the detail. If I do the detail, I'll do the highlight. And before you know it, I'll have painted the eye. I'm going to save that for the end. It's just like when we paint apples and pears. I focus so much on the background before I even touch the pear, right? Because you're creating a space for it. So uh, that eye doesn't mean anything till I get kind of everything around it. All right, now let me get some stripes in. Now I'm pretty dry with the paint, right? There's not a whole lot. It's pretty flat. There's no texture on my paint right now. Okay, you can see I'm just using black. Black here, which I've mixed, like I said, with the burn umber and ultra blue. Just filling it in. Can even be a little more sketchy, right? Because over here it's a little lighter here, so maybe I'm not as dark with the paint. I've only dipped into my paint here, you know, three or four times. Not using a whole lot. See how we're we're getting somewhere, right? We're creating kind of our map to fill in. All right, I'm also happy because my, uh, my breath has regulated, I think, the first two minutes of the video. I wasn't breathing. If you heard me gasping for air, that's what it was. Okay, here we go. So usually my jokes fall pretty flat in class, and now they are met with deafening silence. <laughs> but you have to laugh at yourself. The more I talk, too, the more I realize that I'm taking on a, a Bob Ross-esque uh, calm, jokey personality. So maybe we're kindred spirits after all. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I'm just filling in dots. If your dots are wrong, if that means that they're not in the exact spot um, where you want them to be, that's okay. Don't fret over the spots, right? I'm just filling it in. And look at that. We have something, you know, paralysis is like the absolute end when you don't know what to do. And I could see being outside of a class just staring at a white canvas and just being like, I don't even know what to do. So if you're doing this with pastels, let's say, you do the same thing. Work from dark to light. Work on a color piece of construction paper. You know, kids' art supplies, you could, you could make fine art with it too. Um, if you didn't have pastels, you know, you could even just do it with pencils, right, or charcoal, um, some really basic things. Most of my sketches are, are in charcoal. I love charcoal because it acts a whole lot like paint. Okay, 
Got it. Now, uh, the color, you know, is still really intense. We're going to start to see that color kind of work in our advantage when we start to put some of these neutral tones down here. And I'm going to push this out of the way and get rid of those uh, annoying shadows here. Okay. Um, I'm still using this tiny little brush, right? That was for kind of our, our detail, uh, kind of a line drawing. That's kind of what this is acting like, like a line drawing. I'm going to switch to a, a broader brush. So that's this brush here. Um, for people that like numbers, it's a number four filbert. And I'll be honest, those numbers don't really mean so much to me because I've seen a four that was double the size and then half the size too. So each brand has its own kind of um, number system. And they're generally pretty close, but that's a number four. Filbert, what does that mean? Well, it's flat, meaning look how flat it is on the side and it's rounded on top. Um, if they have, if a brush is called a flat, it'd be totally flat on top. But the funny thing is the more you use a flat, the more it turns into a filbert. Interesting, right? <laughs> okay, um, so let's go with that number four filbert. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use that black that I have here as a base. Funny, mixing in white, I could see it's a little more brown. Right, there was more brown than blue, which is okay. Um, I'm gonna start to fill in all this area here. The lighting, I'm in a basement because I wanted consistent lighting and this is also uh, where my studio is. Um, but natural light would probably make a truer um, version of this painting for you to see um, because um, the basement, it's kind of an orangey light down here. So everything's probably a little orangey. How do you know? Well, I. When I look at the white here, um, through the phone, you can see it's got a little yellow in it, right? Um, if it was more uh, natural light, it'd be truer white. Okay, does that even make sense? I, I don't know. <laughs> so let's work up from dark to light. I'm gonna work with some gray here. I see kind of warm over in this area. You're seeing it through the phone, basically recording, so it has this kind of blue synthetic look to it, but here, at home, I can assure you, this is a warmer. And I'm just gonna start to mix. Okay, now look at that orange showing through. Um, it's a little too orange, but uh, you get the idea. That's gonna be nice. It's gonna be much nicer than white showing through. There we go. Now, notice my brush strokes are big and broad, right? Um, because what are we doing? We're taking something complicated right? And we're simplifying it. Um, a student or even a kid, someone that has um, maybe not a, uh, the experience to know what the paint is doing, right? They're going to go and want to go and write and get the, uh, the tiny details and start doing the smallest details first because those are what jump out at you. You know, get right to the whiskers and right to um, the, the texture of the fur here. But look at I'm just what you call massing it in. I'm just blocking it in. Because at this point, I want to start from the broad and work myself towards the detail. Already though, ooh, that's, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now it was important to me too, I, I, I just grabbed this um, online and I promised I would give credit to the artist. So uh, the photographer is Julia Larson Meyer and um, basically, um, what I did is I, I copied it and then I cropped it so it was a square. So I'm matching. That's one less thing my brain has to do. You know, if this were a full picture and I was trying to zoom in on this tiny little area, that would prove kind of tricky. All right, I added some burnt sienna. Why? Well, I'm seeing a little bit of warmth up here. What's happening here? Interesting, right? Burnt sienna is transparent. It's a pretty transparent color. Look at you can see right through the paint. If I add a little white, white will add opacity. And now it's more solid, right? But I don't mind that orange coming through. I actually think that's quite nice. Okay. Okay, continue to fill in. See how it's a little darker right on the edge of the stripes and the spots. Just almost scrubbing it in. 
right? If you're not sure how to approach this, you know, do an animal with stri stripes or some kind of like spotted texture. See what I did? I kind of filled in some of these dark areas here. Now it's reading very brown. Um, you might not see that here, but I kind of, I, I played up the, the warm colors here. So there's lots of browns here, down here, up here. Played that up a little bit, and that's okay. I'm, I am the artist, right? Um, and colors is something I'm interested in. So I'm gonna play up kind of the warm colors and maybe also some of the cool colors, meaning some of the bluer areas that I see. Okay, a little darker than maybe you see here too, but that's okay because I'm gonna be putting light on top of it. Now, if this were acrylic, you would do the same thing. You would block it in, but just be careful with the, the texture of the paint. Acrylic dries very fast, so a, a big um, kind of gloppy brush stroke early on will be there at the end of the painting. So right now I can kind of flatten things because it's staying wet. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, you know, to kind of scrub the paint in the beginning lighter um, in terms of like the, the texture or the weight of the paint and the quantity of the paint. Okay. Is this good so far? Gosh, I realize now um, I usually can ask class for validation and I can't get that here. So hopefully you all nodded in agreement to help boost my confidence so that I can finish this. Okay. Uh, what did I do? I just added more white and then I'm going to add a little cerulean blue. It's a little bluer here. Ooh, look at that. Wow, does that pop? Why? Well, for one, blue against orange. Contrasting, right? Um, and also the blue against kind of the warm areas here. I see some blue. Oh, and notice too, if I make my brush strokes, look at the way the fur is growing, right? It's great. It tells a whole story, right? Starting at the eye, look at it. Kind of radiates out from the eye, especially here. You can really see it. The fur just kind of growing around the eye. If I have my brush strokes do the same, which I kind of uh, subconsciously have been doing, um, just because those are the types of things like I just see it, you know, because I've done it enough, you might not see that. So just keep that in mind that have your brush strokes follow the form, the shape of the object. Okay. How am I doing? Okay. It looks look at it, it looks kind of dead too because there's no pupil here. Um, that was a trick my painting teacher taught me to save the eye, save the eye for the end because then it's like you, with a few brush strokes right at the end you just you're gonna give this thing life. Okay, this is a little darker than what I see it, right? Um, I say this a lot in class, you know. It's nice if you get it right the first time, but most of the time you put down something that's okay. Kind of right, maybe kind of wrong, but um, getting something down is so important just to kind of fill things in because then you can make adjustments later. It's all layers, it's all adjustments. Okay, well I'm kind of filling in with some cool bluish color. I see lots of blue here. I'm gonna be able to maybe warm it up in a few spots on top as a layer. And it will really bring it to life. Ooh, look at that, right here. Just that little brush stroke, just that little bit of hair. We're gonna like play that up in a little bit. But look at how that, wow. That's how you do fur. So fur is just, right, following form. So what am I doing? I'm just filling it in, having my brush strokes follow the way the fur is growing, but I, I'm not, you know, I'd paint an apple the same way at this point. It's really going to be those few details right at the end that make it look like fur. Uh, John Singer Sargent, who's uh, one of my favorites, but I try not to get too close to him because he, he kind of baffles me too with just how good he is, especially at drawing, but he can take something so complex like a like a chandelier or like an oriental carpet and add 
the design, right? With just one or two, three strokes, right? He doesn't overdo it. A lot of times it's just like messy brushwork with just a couple lines to add the texture and the design. You know, when we, when you, let's say we were painting um, fabric or something, right? We want to go right in with the pattern and the design first, right? Same way we want to go in with individual hairs first. Those details are, are calling us, but we have to kind of see through them because we're building something, a foundation here that we can paint on top of, right? Um, what's the hardest part of a painting? Getting it all filled in, right? This is like the labor part. Um, this is the part sometimes that keeps me from painting because uh, sometimes I'm impatient and I just want to get to it. Here I added a little more burnt sienna. Yeah, but you just want to get to it. You just want to start getting into all those little details that called you to, you know, the, the reference to start, like, like those blues in the iris. But those blues and those greens, they don't mean anything until I kind of get everything else around it, right? Okay, a little lighter here. So honestly, like, is, is this enough for fur? You know, kind of. This isn't bad, but I know I can kind of push it a little further and add a little more detail. But just getting that filled in, wow. And is there, are there areas that aren't correct or exactly like the reference? Absolutely. You know, but at the end of the day, this is all that matters, what we have here. A lot of times, sometimes people ask, to see, you know, what's your reference? What were you looking at? And I'll show them. And it almost takes away from the painting too because there's all of a sudden an expectation to create exactly what you see. But this is just, um, you know, a jumping off point. Okay, I'm gonna lay it up here. Now animal anatomy, right? Where it's light, those are areas that are closest to us, okay? So look at the brow here. If I lighten that up, let's see. If I lighten that up here, what did I do? I just added white paint with a little burnt sienna. But look at what happens. Look at what happens to the structure. It comes forward, right? That light value comes forward. And now all of a sudden it's closer to us. Same with here, right? The lighter values are gonna help define areas that are coming forward in the same way that the darker values get pushed back. Right here, this is like a really exquisite part. This little kind of skin um, that comes down around the eye and rounds around the eye. But look at that. All of a sudden, it's like there's a curve now in the face. Couldn't have done that without getting all that texture underneath. Not texture, maybe I should say um, the form underneath, the form of the animal. Okay. Um, every painting, maybe every act of painting, right, has like a flow to it. At the beginning, it's always just kind of a struggle, but I've learned just to kind of push through. Keep your brush moving. Um, a lot of times, things will happen. Um, yeah, to say the least. Um, sometimes not, not exactly what you want to happen, but basically by getting it just covered, right? I, it's frustrating in the beginning. Painting can be um, uh, frustrating, right? Um, when things aren't looking the way you want to, but I know it's just about layers, right? And it's about time. Um, and, you know, and there's always tomorrow too. As you know, when you look at your painting from one week to the next, right, it changes. Uh, a lot of times uh, students, sometimes the seniors I work with, they're not very confident about the work they made. And then I'll take a photo of it and show it to them with like a black background. And it cancels out all the noise around. And um, it looks almost like a frame. And you know that, like that frame around it, it gives you permission to say, hey, this is finished. You know, and this is art and this is worthy. And um, I really have not met someone who wasn't um, satisfied with an artwork after doing that. It's a bit of a trick, but uh, it helps you see through kind of the mistakes and say, hey, this isn't so half, half bad. 
that's what a frame does. All right, while I've been uh, blabbering, I've been lightening up, right? So I truly went from dark to light. It's very light here, right here. And I'm gonna add a little cadmium yellow deep, which is really like a like Tennessee volunteer orange, right? But I had a, a teacher who would say, oh, that's like the color of light. Ooh, look at that, it's glowing warm. Is that too much? Sometimes, sometimes it looks a little like too much there. So, more white, that will work. I'm getting more confident too with the paint, so I'm going a little thicker. So remember I said, you know, painting is not paint by number, but kind of tricked myself into doing it that way, right? Now look at that. That is glowing. And what does that do? Well, it pulls your eye to uh, to his eye. Yeah, look at that. Pops out. Warm colors come forward. Cool colors go back. So in shadow areas, you know, if you play up the cool, that will work to your advantage. And if you play up the warm, I'm adding this cadmium yellow deep with white. Adding a little texture too. Watch this. These are bristly brushes, so if you look up close, you're gonna get some texture. Right, and it maybe even looks like fur. That only works because I have kind of a layer underneath it. With acrylic, if it were dry, um, you're gonna be able to do that with a small brush on top. Meaning a brush maybe about this size, and you can bring out some of those individual hairs. Okay. Look at that. I know it's not um, a zoom in here, but you can see I'm just building texture, right? And what does that do? It creates kind of a believability that, that this thing is covered in fur, you know? thousands of little hairs that I wouldn't dare try to start from the beginning. Some artists do um, paint a little bit more maybe uh, like naturalistic, like if you were looking at an animal um, kind of anatomy book or something, science textbook, right, where it's important to see the detail where, you know, the way I paint, it's a little more, more emotional, right? A little more feeling, a little more expressive. But I love detail too. You know, that didn't help me in school because I would draw something kind of off or unsymmetrical, no, asymmetrical, and, uh, but just like render it really well. And the teachers would just be like, oh, that's great. And I would say, like, it's terrible. The drawing is terrible. So it's kind of hurt me in some ways too. But we all, you know, just being aware of our strengths, that will help. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> How many times can I say okay? Here we go. Filling it in. This is when the obsession starts, right? That's when you start having more fun. This usually happens in class when there's five minutes left before cleanup, right? You just want to keep painting. They call this the zone. <laughs> But it's true, you know, if you're stuck in the house, creating some time and space to create um, will probably be the fastest uh, moments of the week. It is for me, because your brain kind of suspends and you're focusing on these tiny little minute details and you are somewhere else. All right. See what I'm doing here? I'm just going in, making adjustments. I'm still using this big number four brush. Um, that's not to say I couldn't move on to a number two brush. Um, these are Blick brushes, Blick Master Stroke. I like them because if you clean them and take care of them and love them, they will last a long, long time. And they're not um, like a complete fortune. They're not the cheapest brushes, but they will 
um, they will serve you well and they will last uh, if you keep them keep them clean yes and they have this nice uh, color here which I really love okay where to I'm going with the light value with the white and I'm gonna start adding some individual um, kind of strokes to replicate fur just a few in a different um, different areas and notice it's growing right it's like a radial um, kind of pattern right it's kind of circular starting from the center which is the eye but just adding some of these Wow right look at that those three strokes made the whole area fuzzy now as like uh, as the painter you're also kind of the editor it's easy to get carried away right um, so knowing when to stop is usually one of those things that comes with experience because you've ruined you've ruined enough paintings to know that it's time to stop that doesn't mean uh, don't experiment but um, you know it doesn't have to be everywhere I guess is my point you know look where it's most prominent like here let me add a few more right there and here okay right that looks pretty good Wow, look at that one. Sometimes you get lucky, right? That brush stroke looks pretty good. All right. I'm already at about the half hour mark, which means people are probably like, get on with it. I like how I said, I'm gonna teach you how to paint an eye and I never actually paint an eye. <laughs> All right, what do you think? Maybe, okay. Maybe I'll just go in tiny details. Like I said, I'm in the I'm in the zone, guys. So bear with me. I have some black with this tiny little brush. These little brushes are watercolor brushes because they can get a really fine point. Um, this small, you actually don't need a bristly brush, right? Um, these synthetic watercolor brushes that are meant for holding water can actually hold oils just fine at this level. If you use a little bit of the gel medium, uh, the solvent-free gel get it nice and thin because what I want to do is I want to bring out some of the dark right some of those darks now I'm painting onto white paint so I have to kind of keep dipping into my black here but again a few you can hear me I'm holding my breath because it's the detail I don't even want my body to move right I just want to add a few right do those help to see it? one two three they're identical they're all the same nothing's uh, less interesting in nature than repetition right just look outside nature rarely repeats itself right if you look at a, a tree full of flowers everyone is different in a small way but that variety that makes it look natural Okay, small brush, actually kind of tricky. I was actually doing okay with that bigger brush. All right, but I added some of the kind of darker hairs that I'm seeing kind of poke through. And like I said, I can always let this dry and go back in and add these little details later. This is for the impatient, <laughs> you know, while it's all wet. Ooh, look, there's actually a dark kind of streak here. Let me go bring that in a little bit. Hopefully this is fun um, watching me paint. Um, if it's not, I give you full permission to turn off at this point and you won't hurt my feelings. All right, and let me get, there's like a, I was gonna call it a whisker, but one of these long hairs. What do you call a whisker that grows out of your brow here? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna try to do it in one stroke. Ready? Just like that, like that. One, two, three. Oh, 
That's way too thick. That's okay. I might have to to leave it for now. Let's do it again, a little thinner. There, a little better. Okay, and at this point, everyone's saying it was really nice until he added the eyebrow whisker. <laughs> and then he ruined it. Okay, I'm gonna go in now for the eye. Um, Timestamp, 36 minutes, 36 seconds. I should add that in the comments. So say you don't have to listen to me for the beginning if you just wanna see the eye. But hopefully this is the magic that we've all been waiting for. Again, black. Um, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Just fill that in. Eyes are always kind of weird when you look them up close, like cow's eyes and even my dog's eye. It kind of grosses me out because there's it's not like a circle. It's like this weirder. Look at that shape. It's this weirder shape. Um, that would really bother me if my if my uh, my pupil was in a circle, like some of these animals, like goat eyes, you probably like, you literally like stop talking. Okay, um, look at that already. There's some shadow there, right? Right. There's a brow on top, so the shadow underneath inside the eye. Um, and finally, 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 we can use color. I give you permission. Um, here I see lots of colors. Cerulean blue. It's a nice kind of like almost like a tropical kind of blue. Makes a tropical kind of green, meaning kind of a brighter fluorescent. You know, really pop. Not earthy. Bright. Okay, I clean my brush. I haven't done that so much. Just to get some of that off. Okay. I have a little brown in there too, that's okay. Not the end of the world. Um, where to start? Let's start with the blue here. And it's almost hazel. There's blue, brown, and yellow. So this yellow ochre. You know, I just used a few colors to describe it. What colors do you see? Well, I see brown, blue, and yellow. So use the colors that you just say. If you're not sure a color, just talk out loud. And you might find the colors you need. Color is more intuitive too, so I have a feeling we'd all pick different colors for this eye. Some of us love color and want to just like get right to it. Um, and that's where style comes in. You know, you can paint this leopard with more blues here than, than I did here. You know, I chose orange in the background. You might choose something totally different. And that's what style is, right? We'd all have a different style. Starting to come together. Now look on the phone, it's really, really blue. Seeing through what you're seeing. So let's do that. Let's play up that blue here. And then right around the rim, there's this kind of glowing orange, kind of orangey yellow here. Just gonna go in with some ultramarine blue. That's like Bob Ross would be like, let's let's get a little crazy. <laughs> okay, not bad, right? There's that little bit of a kind of edge. Um, I'm gonna try to use this big brush. It's much lighter too, and maybe go orange, orange and yellow ochre. It's like an it's a little toned down. I think that orange, you know, the orange underneath certainly is going to show through. Not bad, not bad. Um, here's a question. I use not bad to describe, you know, something I've been working on for 40 minutes. Uh, that's typically how it goes. Um, my goal is, you know, to teach teach students to not hate their paintings. <laughs> and it's hard, you know, especially, you know, years go by and you look at something and I'm just like, oh, all I see is what's wrong with it. You know, it's hard to love what you make, um, you know, but give yourself a little break here too, because we're learning. This is my, you know, first 
first painting demo, so I'm cutting myself a little slack too. Of course, there are things I would change, and maybe that's what the second day is for, but for what it's worth, you know, this is kind of accomplishing what I wanted it to do. And the more you paint, you know, sometimes the more perfectionist you are, the more mistakes you make, uh, m mistakes you see. Um, but it's okay, you know, to love, to just, just love the painting that you made and learn from it. Okay, I'm trying to play up that blue. It's turning kind of green. And watch, I'm going to bring it out upstairs with natural light. And I'm just going to be like, woof. <laughs> but right now, basement lighting, not bad. All right, while I'm talking about other things, you know, I'm not talking about what I'm painting exactly, but I'm just lightening it up, right? Dark on top, right? It's a ball. So it acts like a ball, right? Light falls on it like a ball. Um, but it's also transparent, so it's really, really tricky. But there's shadow on top, right? And light on the bottom. So that's what I'm playing up. I have the feeling if I just go in with a little smaller brush, a little bit of orange, and just kind of highlight the bottom here. There, that's, that's kind of it, right? That glow underneath right it gives it kind of that that round shape I might even just bring some of that light into the iris the iris itself is almost in like an abstract okay not bad wow where are we let's see I don't think I have too much more to go you know at this point you know, I might go back and make more adjustments and clean things up. Like, you know, there's a little highlight here under the eye. But is that really important? I don't know. I think it's okay. I think I'm going to leave it and just do the highlight, which is uh, at, time the mo at times the most uh, kind of satisfying brush stroke and also one of the trickiest. I would say 70% of the time, I do it twice. Um, just because you don't get it right. You wanna get it in kind of one stroke. Let's see, let's see if we could be a 30% right now. So there's the highlight. Actually wanna make it kind of thick. Actually, you can see here, I'm not uh, being a good example because I've run out of paint. So let me get a little bit more white. I just started using this stuff, Permalba. Look at that artifact. I think that was my mom's from when she was in college in the 60s. Um, still good. It's still good. It doesn't look good, but it's still good. And all that counts is what's, what's inside. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to it, a little bit of yellow. You know, I don't want pure white. And I'm going to try... You can see it's kind of a like a boomerang shape. Ooh, that might be good. Ah, maybe I should leave it. That's actually just a tiny kind of secondary highlight underneath. There we go. I think that's it. I'm gonna call it at just about 45 minutes. Thank you guys for um, watching this video and hanging out. Um, and now I feel like every YouTuber ever with that uh, stock thank you at the end. But I hope to post again. Um, if you have any questions uh, about this painting or anything else, feel free to drop me a line. All right. Thanks so much.